Hey Shubi Doodlers, how are you doing? Well all this week on Draw Stuff Real Easy I've been showing how to draw chess pieces for a specific reason uh, to make this video today which is to show how to draw chess pieces on a chessboard and to get that kind of perspective thing. So kind of part of my idea with this um, was I've been talking to people on my Patreon channel um, and one or two said that what they'd really like to know about is kind of putting characters into landscape and sort of background. This will give you an idea of uh, one point perspective, uh, a very simple kind of plane, which is what a chessboard is, uh, and placing characters, which is what these are within that plane, heading off into the distance. <laughs> but let's not talk about it. Let's do it. Okay, well, a chessboard is looking from above, oh, let me get that in the center, is you divide it in half, and you divide it in half again, you divide that again, you divide that again, and we end up with an eight by eight set of squares, eight rows and eight columns. So if we were to draw chess pieces onto here, we would be doing a, an aerial view like that, and that's pretty much all we'd need to do. But that's a little bit boring. We can add a bit of shading, I suppose. Um, but that's not really what we want. We could also um, draw the whole thing from the side um, and we could draw uh, chess pieces like that. But you don't kind of really get a feeling of the game um, and the position that those chess pieces are in. So what we need to do is to add a bit of perspective. So how do we do that? So, well, let's take the front line here and I'm going to draw something like that. And I'm going to now draw lines going off into the distance, like that. And these are going to be perspective lines going off to the vanishing point on the horizon. So we've got the horizon, and this is vanishing point. Now, in the way that I kind of halved and halved and halved this, then we can do the same thing here. And I can put a little line there, little marks there, so that halving and halving and halving and halving. So then I can draw a line up there, like that. And you can kind of feel, this looks like a tractor has been up and down a field going way off into the distance on the horizon line. And then this is the difficult part, is kind of determining quite where the, those are the rows, the columns are, this is now working kind of where the rows are gonna go. And to me, that feels like these are squares. If I went and did a line there, that feels like a rectangle and not a square. So it's a visual thing. And as you draw more rows, the lines, the spaces in between the lines is gonna get smaller. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. So these are gonna start getting smaller because they're getting further away into the distance. One, two, three, four, five, six, two more, seven, and eight. And then, so that will then be your chessboard in three dimensions. And if you want to be fancy, you can give it a bit of a, a bit of an out little side bit like that. and. You can make it 3D as well, like that. Maybe a bit of shading around it to make the whole thing even more fancy. But the whole thing is based around this vanishing point on the horizon, and this is one point perspective. And I've got a whole lot of videos on Patreon telling you all about perspective, so you can go and sign up there and find out about those. But I can tell you a little more about perspective. We can we can change the angle that we view. So if we're looking at this sideways on, we can just poke our heads up above the board a little bit. So what we could do is have a very, very shallow angle um, of to go to the horizon like that, which means then that our um, rows are going to be very close together and it'll be much more like that. So it's going to be a much more uh, shallow angle than that one there. If you want to be really distorted, you could also then do um, something like this. Um, and then we can draw a point to there and down to the middle and down to the middle and down to the middle and down to the middle, down to the middle, down to the middle. 
and we can draw so that we got it going completely off at one angle like that. Our chest pieces have been laid out of a cylindrical piece of wood. So once this was a cylinder and it's been spun around the middle and all these bits have been taken away. So you could imagine your castle having once been a cylindrical piece of wood. And so inside this piece of wood, you originally had this castle desperate to get out. So we had to take away all the wood on the outside to reveal the castle that was hiding inside. So we could imagine that these are just cylinders to start off with and think, how do they fit on there? Well, when you draw a circle, oh, that's a circle-ish, in a square, that's looking down from above. But when you tilt the whole thing, then you can see that the square has become a rectangle and has turned into kind of something more like this. And the circle has turned into an ellipse. So to be able to draw the base of this chess piece in a perspective square, we have to turn it into an ellipse. So it will be sitting in there something like that. And we can imagine all these chess pieces as kind of cylinders sitting on the chessboard like that. And then all we have to do is to take away whatever's inside, uh, take away the castle. We just have to take all the stuff on the outside and we will be left with a chessboard with chess pieces on it. Now to make things easy, I've drawn this one earlier and printed it out and you can print it too if you go to Patreon, you'll find this on there if you join my Patreon page. Um, so what do we do? Let's imagine we want a castle, which usually sits on the end here, doesn't it? So we want to have it sitting right in the base there. And if you go and look at uh, Draw Stuff Real Easy all this week, I'll put a little link up here. You will see I've shown how to draw all these different um, chess pieces. So this is gonna come up kind of around like that, and then that will come up and then we've got little crenellations on there like that. So that will now be putting this chess piece in that square on the chessboard. I'm going to put a little bit of shading around there just to make it kind of feel like it's a bit more real. So that's how big it's going to be there. How big should it be at the other end? Well, we've got our um, perspective lines going off about there. So let me find that perspective line. <laughs> so that perspective line, we'll need to draw a line on the top of the castle's head going to the vanishing point in exactly the same way. And we can draw another castle here by starting off with an ellipse, placing it on the, on the board and then Whereas this line is going through the top here, then it's going to have to go through the top here like that. And in terms of perspective, that is how big that one should be at that kind of distance on this perspective board. And I think that should actually be a little bit more round. So the ellipses will be more, depending on the, the level that you're looking at, the ellipses will be flatter or more circular. So I think that's probably a bit better like that. And we could try drawing a pawn again. So we're going to want to have this kind of ellipse there. And the pawn's head is going to be about like that. And it will come down. Let me find the pawn. There we are. There's something like that. Uh, it's going to come around there. And so in fact, it wants to be more like that. Now, the difficulty here is that by drawing a line to there, you can't really tell. So you're going to be having to do a lot of this uh, is judgment. And so you can have to imagine that's going to be about there. And the top is going to be about like that. And that will come down. And then we have that kind of ring thing around there like that. 
And of course, it doesn't have to sit right in the middle because sometimes um, things get pushed. So you could have it just hovering over the edge like that. And you might find that it's a... So you can just sort of keep drawing and drawing and drawing. So you can find your favorite game <laughs> layout. Some fantastic game that was played by some computer sometime against some grand monster. Um, and you can lay out all the pieces. You can sort of work out, you know, you've got a white queen there or something, and then you can draw in your white queen. And then having got that in, let's assume this is a assume this is a, a white um, pawn. This might want to be on a black square. And then you have to start shading in all those squares as well. And then <laughs> you can spend the whole afternoon doing that. So this is a really long kind of project. Um, but it's something that will pay dividends if you spend some time working on this. And just, just gently working it out. And if you... Um, you know, if you're in trouble, you can always trace what you've done before and get it right, and build on build on the work that you've already done. You don't always have to redo everything from scratch. You can always trace. And then, in building up this game, one way you can look at this is that this is a landscape, and these are characters, and it works exactly the same by sort of putting little cats <laughs> um, into a, a landscape. Like that, and then you might want to have a dog <laughs> in that landscape. And by doing exercises like this, you will get it stuck into your mind how everything fits into a, a three dimensional plane uh, and how things get smaller as they go further back, so that you can um, work out where everything fits. Um, and then you can think, yes, that's going to be roundabout where the the trees are going to be and the mountains are probably going to be off there somewhere like that and so you can build up three-dimensional drawings with characters on a plane and by doing this very formal thing with um, a, a chessboard uh, you can get this idea of this kind of grid in your head and you'll find a lot of artists will work things out with this grid but it all gets erased at the end you never see it but the grid is there and if they don't actually draw the grid the grid is in their head. Thanks for watching, and you can support this channel and get so much more on my Patreon page. Click to find out more. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rain and Drawing channel on YouTube, and in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.